So, good morning, everybody. How are we today? Good morning. Fantastic. Can we get a round of applause for Junior Anthony one more time? Because awesome. this dude, this dude put together this event, right? I've been to a lot of events, and the access you get here is just truly amazing. It's such a blessing to be here. Eric, what are your th um, takes on expansion? Yeah, so f for expansion, I'm a firm believer, right, that I have to literally understand a majority of every aspect of my business before I can delegate those tasks out to everybody else. You know, I get, I get messages all the time, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, it's like, hey, Eric, I've been doing this for three weeks. I wanna hire a team of virtual assistants, and it's like, it doesn't make logical sense because you don't even know what needs to be done in order to hire that team of virtual assistants because you've been doing this for three weeks. So it's like, we're always looking for the shortcut, right? And don't get me wrong, there's absolutely shortcuts in events like this and surrounding yourself with the people who've done this and, are, are, and have done what you are looking to do so you can follow their path, but you still have to take the action and learn the processes yourself so when something happens in your company and in your business or whatever you're doing, you can pinpoint what the problem is and address it immediately. Because if you're paying someone else to do something, they could potentially be losing you tens of thousands of dollars a year, but you can't even recognize it because you've never done that task yourself. Now, there's a huge factor that comes with doing all this, and it, and it stems from fear, right? Because now, once you understand your business fully, you have to start delegating these tasks. And if you're anything like me, which I'm sure a lot of you are, you have the fear of like, I, I've been doing this for years now. I can do this the best. There's no way I can train anybody to do this better than me. So delegating that task, you have to relinquish control. And that is a challenging, challenging aspect as, a, as just a human being, you know, especially a business owner because it's your baby. You know, whatever you're doing on a daily basis, you've been nurturing it and feeding it on a daily basis. So to, to be able to push that task onto somebody else and expect them to perform is a challenging concept to get your mind wrapped around. But I promise you all this, right? With the proper training and meetings and teams and delegation, it's possible, it's going to take time. These people are going to make mistakes. So for example, right now in, in my Amazon company, I have about 60 employees, right? I could leave that company for literally four months and absolutely nothing would change, right? I would, I would join some day, uh, Zoom calls, some managers meetings, just make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, but I've hired managers in place to manage the different teams, and I've trained them thoroughly so they know exactly what needs to be done to put out any fires, because fires are gonna happen. I think it's an important aspect to put trust in your team and trust in yourself and just trust in the process, which is so, so challenging. There's a lot of fear involved there. Um, and I think really, if you can encompass all of these things and continue to stay positive and just wake up with the mind of gratitude, and, and it's important to understand for me that when I think of gratitude, it's, it's an action. You know, so it's one thing for me to wake up in the morning and be like, yeah, I'm super grateful for this amazing event. I'm super grateful for my team members that are growing my business. I'm super grateful to be in Orlando and, and not have to be at work every day, right? Like, but it's another thing to express that gratitude because gratitude is an action, right? So how do I express that gratitude, right? By sitting on a stage and sharing this experience with all of you, you know, or sending a quick message to my team, like, great job today. You know, every day I get an update at the end of the day because I, I, regardless of what place in the world I am, I want to know our production numbers, like what happened today. So every day at the end of the day I get an update, like 12,000 units produced, 15,000, whatever the number is, you know. And just a short message, like great job team. You know, it just lets them know that not only am I accountable, but I care. 
right? I think it's a, a super important aspect to be a leader in your business. I talked a little bit about this on, on, what was it, Friday. There's a huge difference between a boss and a leader. You know, a leader guides their team. A leader has no problem pulling up their sleeves and getting their hands dirty. A boss is like, you did this wrong, instead of saying, let me show you how to do this correctly. So I think incorporating some of these aspects into your everyday life and also personal relationships, not just business, will allow you to become better, well-rounded human beings and help you accomplish anything that you put your mind to. Absolutely love that, guys. Um, that's an amazing concept on expansion. Um, it's definitely something that I feel it, that's um, what takes you to the next level. Like, um, like it literally, like that's like some of the key points, and also like the fear into it, right? Because, like you said, it's your baby, and then you know, like, just to be honest, ain't no one could do it better than we can do it, right? So you take a big risk, and then you know sometimes we have to let them do it, and then you mess up, and you're like. Oh, you have to do it yourself or, you know, tell them to do it again. But it's an amazing um, feeling, right? Because now let's also talk about the feeling. It's an amazing feeling when you can actually coach and teach someone to do something effectively and they actually get it. It's an amazing feeling. And, and I, I think the, the aha moment really happens when you start training someone and you find out they do it better than you. Oh, yes. You're like, you're like this is amazing, you know? Yeah, sir, like, we got Maggie over here. I'm going to go back to Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> Armin. Um, um, yeah. Expansion. Uh, I wanted to actually share two things. Uh, foundation and delegation, these are very important. I just wanted to add to something to complement it. The belief system that helped me build out my team where I stopped doing everything myself was I stopped seeing my people as a means to an end. And instead of just something that they could do for me, I start to see the power potential in them. As the president of Think and Grow Rich, I remember once I came to him, I was like, I was livid. There's no one on my team would listen to me. And this is a whole other set of a team I had. You know, you guys cycle through people. Uh, a lot of my mentors tell me the, first, the people that are with you, you're one to three aren't going to be there, three to five, and then five to ten. And so I remember that that was a whole set of other people I was working with for my seminar business. And this is before the online business. And I had no idea what the hell I was doing. Like I had, there was just a bunch of people in an office with me and I felt like I was running something, you know? Um, there was about three, four people that worked with me. I had, I had a headstrong salesperson. I had someone that was paying on salary and uh, he was supposed to be, I don't know what he was supposed to be actually, I was just paying him salary. And he would show up and I'm like, uh, do this today. And so I had no idea. So th th that goes to show, like if you guys are about to hire your first person, like it's okay you're probably gonna do a terrible job. That's, that's a part of it though, right? Like, like, you, <laughs> like at first I, I was just satiating the hunger of knowing someone works for me. I'm like, oh, that's a great milestone, paying someone's bills. And then I'm like, oh shit, I gotta do something with this person now. So that was kind of this awkward thing. And then I had an assistant that really did nothing but maybe handle the schedule, but they got paid, you know, like uh, the CEO's assistant. So these were all lessons I learned, but the belief system I realized, it was my fault. I went to my, uh, the president one day, and I'm like, Satish, I'm so pissed off. These, you know, I say something, they don't do it, or I say something, and like, they don't even pay attention, or they do it wrong. And he goes, Armin, see, you're the problem. He's very direct all the time. He never wastes any time. He's like, you're the problem, man. I'm like, how am I the problem? I'm showing up every day. I work really hard, 12 hours in. I'm like, they're not even being like me. You know, it's not like I'm, I'm inspiring them to, to model me. He goes, you look at your people like a transaction. He goes, and this is the one that really hurt me because I'm, I'm, I like competition. It really gets me going. He goes, if I took those same people and they worked for me, I would do 10 times more with them. I'm like, don't say stuff Ooh. like that, man. <laughs> that's, a hurt. That's, a, that's, a, you know, that's a stab to the ego. I'm like, don't say that. Now I know, like, I, I, no, no way I'm going to let you say that. And I'm like, deep down inside, I know he's right. Because look what he did with me. And then I actually started thinking, I'm like, how he mentored me, how I grew so much. Like, I don't do that with these people. So I shifted my belief from like, here, you're here to do something for me to what can you do? And that whole, and he's like, Armin, not the potential power in a person, but the power potential in a person. Meaning what could they do? And I stopped looking at them as employees and I'm like, these are my team members. They're my potential partners. So let me treat them that way. And the entire, that shift alone energetically in the team changed. Everyone felt like I was there to uh, you know, work with them on something, not that they're just waiting for me to tell them what to do. Because here's the thing, some people only want that. 
Some people love coming in knowing there's a security and you tell me what to do and I do it and I go home. And in a startup, you usually don't attract those people. You attract the people that are inspired and want to be a part of something crazy like what you're doing because they want to do something like you. So I found, a, I found myself developing and grooming entrepreneurs as employees. And so I'm just like, well, then I don't need employees. I got a team of talent here. Imagine if this was their company, what would they do? So the people that run my business now, I have a core team of four people. There's a head of operations, there's a head of client success, there's a head of Armin operations, my, my EA, and, um, and then there's a person who does all the HR. These four people, uh, and a head of sales. These four people, um, they were with me in the beginning, and I treated them like partners, so now they run it like partners. And it's crazy because they don't own any equity or anything. It was, just, it was just the way I approached them. I respected them in a way where, like, you're not here to do things for me. You're here to build this with me. That flip alone and belief changed the way I led, and, and it changed the way I led, and it changed the way the company changed. Like, we grew really quickly after. And when we went to the online space, we crushed it. That, that business, we did $2 million in, in, like, you know, 16, 17 months. And the other one, we did a million over three years. So I could tell you the cost of leadership when you don't know how to look at your people and build them. And I, I, I read somewhere that if you build the people, the people build the business. And so it's like a lot of people are trying to do marketing methods, but you have a perfectly good human being in your team that if you just groomed and, and brought their potential out, they'll build this 10 times faster for you than you could ever. So that was the belief that shifted for me. Now looking at my people, not as a transaction, um, and they became very inclusive. Today, we, I take a percentage of all my sales every quarter and I give it back to my core team. And so I, I kind of have a value ladder inside the company. I don't know if this is a thing, but people come in and they're like, they're just, you know, the regular team. It's like you're doing something for us. And so if you look at like, it, like at a pyramid, you know, the bottom, bottom is going to be, you know, and corporate be employees. For me, I'm like, these are people that do things. Like you're here to do something for us. And so if you're a video producer, you, video, you edit videos for us. Like the next level is my core team, which is like, you know, the back end, you know, they join the coaching program, they buy the mastermind. So they go up to the core team and there they get a percentage of all of our profits. But to get there, you need to learn really well how to manage people doing things. I'm like, and at the top, top is going to be my partners. And I'm like, at that level, you have to be really good at coming up with ideas that make people, give people things to do, and people need to manage those people doing things. I'm like, when you start adding invaluable ideas that help this company grow, you're a partner to me. Because now when I'm sleeping, you're thinking about how to make more money because that idea will make you more money. And so this idea of giving back a piece of everything you make to your team, it's, I, didn't, I didn't make this up. Starbucks gives you, after three months, sh shares in their company. Any great company that created great leaders inside the company that weren't the actual CEOs, they always give a piece of everything to the, to the company too, the people. And so the people own it. And that's how you get loyalty and leadership without having to pay an arm for it. And honestly, those people that you have to pay an arm for, they're not really loyal, right? It's just the money. And I've had talented people come, way more talented than my core team that we hire the last a few months and leave. Because, hey, things change. Hey, uh, I'm going to go there now. My core team, they'll work 14, 14, 14 15 hours. They'll, if something happens to the company, they're going to take it personal. And those people came with zero skills, and honestly, without that belief system shift, I would have never built them to who they are now. Now they're consulting multi-million dollar clients of ours. And some of them are, were a 19-year-old kid when I met them, just with the desire to be in sales. And now they're teaching sales to sales teams that book 30 calls a day. And he sits there on my, in two years this happened, because I treated the person with power potential. I think you could do this. And I'll give you a little, I'll do a little thing, a gorgeous thing for you guys. So the mind is very susceptible to suggestions. We always talk about auto-suggestion, self-suggestion. So we have the power. Sometimes we forget this. The CEOs, um, at the head of your business, when people work for you, you have the power to really make or break a person. And nobody, either people don't ever notice this and unconsciously just do it by accident, or they do it abusively. But I've very rarely seen, you know, they exercise their control over others. And I'm like, yes, you're, you're just insecure, man. Like, that's, you're trying to prove you're in charge. But there was something I learned from Thinking Girl, which it changed my family relationship with me. I used to have a terrible relationship with my family. This started changing that, but then I used it on my team. It was like wonders. I call it random, I just call it random suggestions, random elevating moments. So in, in TGR, we call it elevation. We want to elevate a person, put them on a pedestal so they have to live up to it. That's the way you get a person to inspire action in them. So I would walk around. These are like 
people with no skills, never have been in a company, never done anything like this. And I had to make them believe in themselves. It wasn't there by making me bigger than them. That's not how it works. I would walk around and I see like my, uh, my head of ops now, uh, they'd be sitting there and I walk by and be like, you know, so really, I'm really impressed with how organized you keep things here, man. Honestly, you would be able to run a whole company one day. I'd just walk away. I'd walk by in the hallway in the office with my salesperson today. I'm like, man, your personality is infectious. You know, any person who speaks to you, they'll probably buy anything you ever sell them. And I would just do these things randomly at any moment throughout the day for weeks and then for months. And they don't even notice it, but I'm planting these seeds in their mind. And what's happening is like inception, right? You're taking these comments, and because it's random and unexpected, it does stick to them. They kind of thought, well, where'd that come from? I started doing this with my brother and my mom. I would, because I try to change them. I was like Tony Robbins trying to change them. And I'm like, you can't do that, man. I would walk by sometimes and go, mom, you're such a great mom. I was just thinking about it the other day. I want to just thank you. Like, I don't know how you did it. I just walk away. Like, and that, I don't even let them respond. Like, I just like leave the seed and I walk. And what happens, it germinates. You know, they're saying they're thinking about like, why did they say this thing? So unexpected. And it starts to grow. And it starts to influence how they see themselves. And because of that, they start to think it's their idea eventually. So all the people I have today, you ask them single-handedly. Some of them know because we studied Thinking Rich together as we grew. Like Armin like planted self-image seeds in us. And everything they have, all the belief they have today is because of these random little things where it nudged them closer towards believing they can do it. This one little thing I did built people up. And it gets harder as you grow as a team. Now we have 12 people and half those people are talented people. They're managers. Um, it's because our business doesn't require a lot of uh, labor or transactional work, it's just a lot of coaching and management. And it's, as you grow, I thought I have to do this myself, but again, what did I plant in them? I'm like, you know, you guys could probably do this better than me. So now they plant seeds in the people that they manage. And this grows. And over time, this creates a very strong foundation of, of leadership and culture where everyone's always trying to elevate each other just because it's the right thing to do. And that's because I set that precedent. That was the biggest shift for me when expanding was looking at people differently. Because if, it's, if they're just the transaction, that's all they'll ever be, even if they could be or not be. So there's the people who like to just be transactional, but then there's the ones who want to be your partner, who will probably leave you if you don't give the opportunity and do, the, do it themselves. My entire breakthrough was this, and I'll end it with this. I was sitting in a room one day, and we had a lot of tension at some point, and I, and I had a feeling, you know, like when you listen to your intuition, you could feel things. I had a little nudge that said, like, everyone here is uncomfortable because they think, I'm going to be very pissed if they want to do their own thing one day. I'm like, I should bring this up. So I just bring it up. I'm like, hey, guys. And there's like all four of us. And I, I broke down a couple office walls, and I made a big, like a big open space room. There was all five of us sitting down together. I'm like, you know, I just want to say, I know all of you guys will probably not be here five years from now. And you guys are so smart, you could probably go and start your own company today. So I just want to say it's an honor that you're here doing this with me. And one guy puts up his hand. He's like, can I say something? I'm like, sure. This guy today, he's, he's honestly my best friend. He's the closest thing to a business partner to me. Um, I trust him in my life. He runs my entire company today. And when I met him, he didn't know what a funnel was or uh, what Tony Robbins was, anything. Like, yeah, he came from India to here. He was a, it's crazy, man, how he transformed to who he is today. He's leading all the teams, building all the KPI systems. He looks at me, he's like, man, I was so uncomfortable. I was so worried you're going to be upset that. I just want to be here for like, you know, a certain time and learn and then go like build a marketing agency. I'm like, bro, I'm gonna help you build the best marketing agency in the world. In the process, help me build this, and we went together. He's like, oh. The way I looked at his response, by the way, Tommy so much, he goes, oh, man, I'm so happy you're saying that. Now I don't have to like hide things. I felt really bad. I'm like, hide things? I'm sitting right here, man. I'm running all these seminars. You just ask me questions. I'll teach you for free. And I remember in that moment, there was a belief that formed in me, and this I want, I want to leave with you guys. I thought, if I don't do that, this will happen anyways. So what do I have to lose if I just bring them in? And we're all open with each other. Yeah. Then what do I have to lose? Is they're either going to stay because they want to, or they're going to leave because they want to. I can't change that anyways. So I might as well make sure we all are honest who's staying, who's not. You know what's crazy? You know what I tell them? I'm like, look. Everyone on my team today, they can go and start their own companies, probably make 100 grand a month if they really wanted to. The kind of mindset I helped them develop, for sure they could, but they don't want to. And so my job isn't forcing them to stay. 
to stay. My job is to develop them so they're so good they could do better than me. But I'm so good to work with that they don't want to do it alone. My whole thing is, you're a smart person if you stay and build something of your own with me. Even if you want to do your own thing, do it with me. I'm always including them, kind of like the parenting with the children, treating them like they matter. It's kind of the same with the employees. Like, I'm always like, you matter too, what do you think? And this is your company. And so for that reason, I create loyalty that's just unbreakable. Like you cannot poach a person from my core team. It's not even, it doesn't make sense. I, I'm sure, um, Junior, I've met your team, very similar characteristics. I'm sure no one could ever come and be like, you're unhappy here, you wanna make more here? They'll be like, get the hell out of my face. <laughs> and that's the, that's the kind of it, expansion, that foundation, the delegation, these things, it's, a, it's, a, it's all a part of this. You have to build such a culture because you treat the people in such a way with respect that it can't break ever. And this whole FIO, figure it out culture, you can't put that on people that are there for transactional reasons. That's, a, that's an unreasonable expectation to have of a person that's fully committed like you. And, and I learned that because my mentors are like, man, this is your child. Don't expect the babysitter to care about your child the way you do as a parent. But what if they feel like it was their child too? And that's the secret. So that's, that's big for me for expansion. I absolutely love that. 